Hello everyone! Welcome to the Student World Talks. My name is Lean and today I will be the host for this episode. I'm super excited for today's episode and I'm super excited to talk to you guys and know more about you, about your questions, about your study abroad journey and plans. Um, if, you, if this is your first time joining, I'm just going to give you a quick summary of, of what is this, of what is this live all about. So the Student World Talks um, is a series of episodes where each episode is uh, unique and different, but all of them are entirely focused on studying abroad. Sometimes we have students um, joining us to share their experiences of uh, studying abroad. Other times we have a psychologist talking about the challenges of studying abroad or like today, we have representatives from highly ranked universities joining us to tell us all about programs, destinations, lifestyle of living in that destination, and so much more about um, studying abroad. So if this is something that interests you guys, and if this is something that you want to do to study abroad, to go out there and research and um, get more information and knowledge about this process, then you are in the right place because this is what we do here. We're always here to give you information, to help you, to guide you so you can find the best option for you. So before talking about today's episode i was just like to um i would just like to know who's watching us today so if you can just comment your name and um also the country that you're watching us from just so i can say hello and just to make it more casual because this is truly what it's about is for us to have a conversation together and um you know for you guys to accomplish your dreams so i already see here um Hi, Anthony from Nigeria. Hi, Anmol from India. Hi, Bohmit from India as well. Hello, Mina from Egypt. Hi, Daniela from Costa Rica. Hi, Gaston from Argentina. And Aziki from Nigeria as well. Um, thank you guys for sharing. I really love, um, you know, like knowing where you guys are watching us from. Hi, Rukun from Turkey. Hi, uh, Victor from Nigeria as well. Luana from Brazil. Um, Hannah from Myanmar. Hi from Mexico, Christian. Hi, Mercy from Kenya. Yusuf from Turkey. Hello, guys. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I really appreciate you guys commenting uh, your countries and your names. And uh, just like how you're doing that now, I would really love to encourage you guys to do that throughout the live as well. And keep asking your questions, keep engaging with us and telling, um, telling us what you would like to know and what you would like us to talk about throughout the live. So just so I can share where I'm from as well. I'm from Syria, but I am living in Canada right now. I came here to study abroad as well, just like you guys want to. Um, so I really know how this process, uh, uh, like how stressful this process can be. But at the same time, it's really enjoyable because at the end of the day, you're really um, accomplishing your goals and your dreams. So before introducing um, who before introducing the university that we're going to have today, um, I would just like to remind you guys to subscribe to our YouTube channel because uh, because when you do that, you get notified of every um, every content or every video that we upload. So just just so that you don't miss anything, I really encourage you guys to subscribe and like this episode and like our videos if you're enjoying them and you feel like you're benefiting from them. And if you're not, um, you're more than welcome to come to us and send us a mes message and uh, give us feedback and about why you don't like the episode and what you would like us to do uh, differently. So now, finally, it's time to introduce uh, today's guest. So today, we have a university that is positioned in the top 1% of the best universities in the world. And um, the educational quality attracts students from all over the world. It is Australia's number one public university for overall student experience. And it's ranked among the 50 young university in the world. Hundreds of courses are offered across five great campuses with flexible study options and a wide range of fields. So this is Deakin University in Australia. If you guys would like to know more facts about it, let's watch this video together. Hi. 
Hi, my name is Ben Stubbs and I'm the director of Deakin University English Language Institute. Welcome to Deakin. Come with me. At the moment, most of our students are studying with our wonderful online program. But soon, we hope that you're going to be coming back to our classroom to meet students from a whole range of different countries and to enjoy your English on your pathway to Deakin. Every student who studies English with us gets a free 10-week membership. Come and join us. Deakin has thousands and thousands of books for you to borrow from anywhere in Australia. We also have thousands of online journals and online materials, including many, many movies, many of the latest movies for you to watch at no charge. It's a fantastic library. Welcome to Deakin University. We are one of the best universities in Australia, and we are in the top 10 for sports management and sports science in the world. We're also in the top 30 for education and nursing, and we're in the top 100 for business. Also, we have one of the best language centres you'll ever be able to experience. We look forward to seeing you soon. That was great. I'm excited to know more about this amazing university, and I hope that you guys are excited as well. So finally, let's introduce the guest for today. We have... Gun... Um, so we have Gonzalo. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Thank you for joining us today. How do you feel being here um, with the students from all over the world? Just like as you saw, there is people from so many countries here joining us. Oh, excellent. Welcome to everybody. Uh, thank you very much for your interest in Deakin, and uh, I hope you'll find uh, what we're going to talk about interesting. Great. So let's start by, um, uh, so I just want to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself, um, who you are and what do you do for Deakin University? Thanks. Uh, my name is Gonzalo Perez, as you can see behind me. Uh, I'm the director of Deakin for Latin America. I live in Uruguay, uh, but in this, uh, in this environment with students from, or with, with people from all over the world, I'm representing Deakin as a whole. Um, so. I normally look after Latin America, and uh, but obviously, if you're interested from I've seen people from all over the world, uh, I can put you in contact with my colleague, uh, who might look after your region in particular. Uh, but and whatever I say, most of what I will say today is general to Deakin our courses, our, uh, our mission process, um, so something about the scholarships. We have scholarships which are some, some are specific to certain regions, some are, are more general based on academic merit and they're open to any student uh, from anywhere in the world. Great. Um, so we already saw so many amazing facts in the video about Deakin University, but can you just give um, us again a quick introduction about who is Deakin University? Perfect. Um, Deakin is a young university. It was founded in 1974. Uh, so we still belong to the category of young universities under 50, and we're number 35 in the world of young universities. Uh, in terms of global rankings, we are ranked around 275, according to QS and, uh, and Shanghai rankings, uh, which are two of the prestigious rankings that, that uh, measure universities. Uh, we offer a variety of courses across the spectrum of, uh, of, of arts, social sciences, humanities, health, medicine, uh, sports science, which is where we are ranked number one in the world. The, the video where you saw Ben, he was talking about the top 10, we're actually number one as of beginning of 2022. And it's the third time we've been number one over the past uh, four or five years. Um, we are in the top 30 in education and nursing, we're in the top 100 of business, uh, uh, accounting and finance, uh, and in the top 150, we've got a, a number of other careers uh, of um, communications, engineering, information technology, we've got the, the traditional 
information technology courses like uh, Master of or Bachelor of Information, Bachelor of Information Systems, uh, and we also have the more modern ones such as information, uh, artificial intelligence, or data analytics, <clears throat> or data science. Um, we do have the career of medicine. I saw somebody asking about medicine before. Uh, it's a long career, uh, which I would think about if you want to be a doctor in Australia. Uh, it's a career uh, of seven years. It's long. It's, there's, a, uh, there's a difficult exam in the middle, uh, and, and it's a, also, also a costly uh, career. But if you want to be a doctor in Australia, it's a, it's a career you can do. Uh, from um, we have a number of bachelors uh, in terms of academic requirements to enter the bachelors uh, if you have a, a high school diploma uh, from a number of countries uh, more the European ones obviously Australia some of the Asian ones as well and international baccalaureate you can go directly into the university we have a, a page in, in our uh, in a web page where you can see country by country of most countries that we recognize whether you can have direct entry to the university at first year or you have to do a foundation program a foundation program is a one year uh, preparatory course that you do uh, in the case of deacon we do it in within the, in the campus in melbourne uh, so you have to do that before you go in so for example if you've got um, uh, a batch of prepa mexicana or a, uh, Encino Medio from Brazil, you will have to do foundation before you can go into into the. Uh, we have a uh, we are a big university. We've got some some sixty thousand students. Uh, we have four campuses uh, in the state of Victoria. The largest one is in Melbourne, but we have two campuses in uh, in a city of Geelong, which is about eighty kilometers from Melbourne. Uh, one is the engineering campus and the other one is the architecture campus. Um, we have a smaller campus in Warrnambool, which is about 280 kilometers from Melbourne. Um, and, and then we have a, an online campus. We always had a long, an online campus, even before the pandemic. Uh, we are going back to on-campus uh, classes uh, next month when we start our trimester. Uh, and but it will be uh, there will be hybrid learning. There will be some classes on campus and some classes which will be pre-recorded lectures that you will have to watch uh, on your own time whenever you want because because they're pre-recorded. Um, what else can I tell you? We have specific, as I said, we have specific scholarships for certain countries. There's a there's a South Asian country scholarship, there's a Latin American uh, student scholarship, there's a mer academic merit scholarships. Scholarships for us are discounts on your uh, on your fees. So you get 10%, 15%, 25%. You can also get a 100% discount if you're a very good student and you have very good uh, high school results or, or first degree results if you want to go into a master's. Um, we have a variety of master courses as well available, um, and we have research. So it's Master of, Philosophy, Master of Science, which is a two-year research uh, 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 master's, which is research, uh, and we have uh, PhDs, uh, which the, the application process is slightly different. Uh, to do it, apply for a master of research, you have to find, first find a as a supervisor and then you go on the application so you have to do your research about the, our researchers you have to think about what is it that you want to study uh, and then uh, what you want to do your research and then see if you have a uh, we have a researcher doing that contact him get in touch with him uh, develop a relationship uh, and and then he will invite you if he's interested in having you as a, super, as, as a student. Uh, so that's the, the more hard one. The, the bachelor's um, and the master's of coursework, uh, you apply through the platform. We look at your academic qualifications. Uh, we don't, you don't have to sit an exam. You don't have to write a, 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 a long motivation letter. You want, you want to study 
I don't know, somebody, I saw somebody mention sociology. You want to study a Bachelor of Arts with a specialization in sociology, you apply to that. You put your high school diploma, uh, you put your English language uh, certificates. Uh, you have to prove that your English is good. If not, we can help you with, uh, as, as Ben said, uh, we can help you get there with our English Language Institute. Uh, what else can I talk about? Uh, we're we're going to talk about more about scholarships and the admission requirements and more details about that. But I think maybe we can start by talking about the programs themselves. Um, so just like you said, it's a it's a very big university with many campuses. So of course you offer like undergraduate, postgraduate, and other courses. So maybe let's start by talking about the undergraduate courses so that the students can know about. So how many undergraduate programs are offered, and uh, which ones would you say are the most popular among um, international yeah. students? Okay, how many, exactly how many, I don't know. We've got over 400 courses that we offer. So, and, and that's master's and, and, uh, and bachelor's. Uh, part of the reason I don't know is that, is that, is that a lot of the, of the, of the uh, bachelor's and even the master's have specializations. So for example, let's start, uh, yeah, they have specializations. All our bachelor's are three years in length, except for the bachelor of engineering, which is four years. Uh, we have double degrees. So you can do a bachelor in forensic science, uh, which is three years. You can do a bachelor in criminology, which is three years, or you can combine them. And in that case, it would be a four year double degree bachelor of criminology, bachelor of uh, forensic science, for example. Uh, we have uh, the bachelor of arts, for example, which in, in, in Australia, arts means humanities and social sciences, sciences is a three year bachelor. And you can have specialization in sociology or specialization in politics, specialization in uh, anthropology, uh, politics. Okay. And, and what it means is that those three years, which basically are 24 courses, uh, so what we call 24 units, uh, you can choose which ones you do and get a major and specialize in sociology, or specialize in politics. Same thing with engineering. You have the, you you can choose your specialization um, and and some of the other courses have all the business courses for example you can specialize and you can do in the business side uh, you can specialize also in at master's level so you can do an MBA which is a two-year course most of our masters are two years uh, especially for international students and there's a reason for that and I'll, I'll get back to that in a second uh, and then you have uh, a master's is uh, just like a bachelor is 24 units uh, which is three years, a master's is 16 units, and that's two years. And then some of those uh, 16 units, you, you choose what you want to do, and you can get a specialization. You can do an MBA and specialize in finance, or you can specialize in marketing, or you can uh, specialize in a whole host of areas of business and management. Uh, um, so, yeah. yeah, we just have a question here from uh, Adeni. Um, asking about masters in cybersecurity. Do you have a masters in cybersecurity? We have a masters in cybersecurity. It's um, it's a two year masters. Um, uh, I, I, I mean, there's a lot of people, so I'm not gonna start looking at links, but uh, I, also because it will take me time to, to look at them. But if, uh, if you want, you can drop me a line. Uh, my email is in, in there and I will send you the brochure. It's a two year masters. Uh, the reason, I, the reason I said most, most international students do two-year masters is that that enables you to, the, to not only to work while you're in Australia, but also to stay on and work now for three years. If you have to do at least two year, a course of two years, uh, a, a master's or a bachelor, and then you can stay and work for three years, which is why most of our masters are two years in length. Uh, perfect. So Belima is asking, with a double uh, degree, do I need to pay double tuition? No. Uh, you you it, you you will pay more because you will do a four year degree as opposed to a three year degree. Okay. So, but our our, our all our courses are uh, eight units per year. Eight units are de depending on the course. Uh, the pri the prices we're talking about for bachelors are something between. 
30,000 Australian dollars, slightly less, uh, or slightly less if you get a scholarship, um, to about 38, 39,000 Australian dollars. Some degrees are more expensive than others. Uh, great. So Bruna's asking, uh, can you talk can you talk a little bit about psychology's masters? Psychology's masters. We have two. Uh, the very popular. There aren't very uh, many sp uh, spaces, so they're extremely popular and hard to get to. We have one, one focusing on clinical um, psychology and one focusing on organizational psychology. Uh, now I don't know, Bruno, where you where you got your your first degree, but what will you will have to do is in order to apply, you will have to ask um, psychology. Australia, the, the Australian Psychology Association to validate that your first degree is equivalent to four years of psychology study in Australia. Uh, it's a process that, that takes a couple of months. Uh, you will have to provide your, uh, your uh, transcripts, your degree, you will have an interview uh, with them by phone or by Zoom, uh, and they will tell you whether your degree is equivalent to four years of psychology study in uh, Australia, then you can apply. Uh, and but you also have to have an ILTS level 7.0 before you apply. So it's a hard one to get into, but it's a fantastic course and extremely popular. Great. Uh, thank you, Bruno, for your question. Mercy is asking, is there a master's in biomedical sciences um, and is it a must to have an English preference, uh, proficiency test if all the levels of education are done in English? Um, we don't have a master's in bio, uh, biomedical science. We have a master's, we have a master's which at the moment is suspended, but it will come back in biotechnology and biostatistics, but we don't have a master's in biomedical science. We have it as a degree and, and it's one of the pathways into medicine. Uh, that's, that's why we don't have a master's. Great. Um, so Taliat is asking if you have a master's in mining engineering. Nope. We have uh, civil engineering, we have mechanical engineering, we have uh, energy, uh, uh, we have engineering management, uh, all the specializations of masters. Uh, we have uh, uh, production processes, but not mining. Have a look in Western Australia and Queensland for, for masters in, in mining engineering. Great. Uh, so while the students are still coming up with their questions and asking us about uh, programs, I just want to ask more about the learning style at uh, Deakin University. So uh, how would you describe the learning style is there? Is it more like practical or is it more like theoretical and uh, research? <clears throat> it, it varies a little bit in the, depending on the course. Uh, bachelors and all masters would have a practical unit, at least one practical unit. So at least one unit where you will do an internship, you will do a consulting project for a company uh, or a, a, a work placement. Uh, so one of the reasons that when you mentioned that we were we have the highest level of uh, student satisfaction of Victorian universities is because we give all the students at least one unit of practical experience. They come out with with work experience uh, as part of our courses. Uh, some of the courses are, are more practical oriented or project oriented. Uh, the engineering ones, for example, uh, almost half of the degree is based on projects. So for example, you might do a Bachelor of Engineering, uh, Civil Engineering, and you want to specialize in building football stadiums or uh, stadiums. Or, uh, so you do your projects on the stadiums. So you, are, you want to do electronics or power and you want to specialize in renewable energy. So you do your projects in renewable energy. Um, some others are a bit more individual. Uh, some of the business uh, projects, uh, courses are, have a lot of also group work and project work. Uh, some others are a bit more individual, the classical arts and the classical sciences, physics, uh, so on. Uh, you know, you do the Bachelor of Science, the specialization in physics, I saw somebody asking that. Um, and you would, a lot of the work you would do uh, it'd be your own, it'd be theoretical physics. Um, somebody asked, talked to ask about the English language entry levels. Uh, to go into Deakin, 
For most of the bachelors, you need an LTS or equivalent of six uh, average and all the components at level six. Uh, some, master, some bachelors require slightly higher and they tend to be the ones linked to education or psychology. Uh, so where uh, we might have to have in-depth conversations with people. Uh, for masters, it's the level is 6.5 uh, minimum level with all all bands at six, uh, except for some like psychology, like teaching, like education, where you will be asked to have a seven uh, average with all bands above six and a half. Um. Perfect. So as I was doing also the research about Deakin University, there is a, the Deakin English Language Institute. So can you tell the students some more about it and why is it beneficial for international students? Uh, Deakin has a very good, prestigious international, uh, sorry, the Deakin uh, English Language Institute, we saw in the video. Um, we have, uh, it's a big institute, or uh, it, it, it caters for over 2,500 students every year, uh, students that come from all over the world. They come to prepare their English or to improve their English in order to come to Deakin, or they come just to study English, uh, maybe because they're in a university in Japan or in Colombia that they require to have a certain level of English to get the degree. So um, they, they, they have to improve their English and they come to us. Uh, it works on, a, it's five days, but in, we, we package it, every level is essentially a five-week course so you will study for five weeks and improve one level uh it's five days five days a week five hours a week uh at the moment we're about to go back on campus so you, you can do in the morning till early afternoon or mid-morning to mid-afternoon uh every day uh it's intensive so it's quite intensive uh it's uh and, and the resources you, you would never be in a class of more than i think it's 14 people uh we will also try and put as as little as a as, as smaller number of same language students in the same class uh and because we're a big uh, language center we can do it Great. So students, uh, so international students can come to um, the Deakin English Language Institute to improve their English and then they can uh, transfer to uh, university and continue their studies. Exactly. Uh, Deakin, uh, the, really, it's a, it's a pathway. You don't, you, then don't, you don't need to set an IELTS test. If you get uh, uh, English for academic purposes level four, you can go into university. That's great. That's a great opportunity for uh, all the people who want to improve their English before pursuing their education. Um, so some students are also asking uh, more questions. So Adig Byte is asking about the PhD in marketing um, at Deakin University. Uh, right. Hi. Um, you, uh, the thing about PhDs is that the most important thing about a PhD is finding a supervisor finding somebody that will be your supervisor in doing those three years. So you have to come with an idea. Uh, if there's something uh, that you want to study, if that's something that you want to research, um, either through myself uh, or my colleagues that look after, um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure where you're based, but uh, in, 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 your, in your region, uh, we will try and find you, help you find a researcher, or you can uh, browse our web and find out who's doing research on what. We're very good at publishing that, who, what researchers are doing what sort of research. And once you find a potential supervisor, you can contact them. Uh, you can write to them and say, I'm, you know, I'm interested in studying this. I want to do my thesis on this. And, and the idea is that you know, he or she then might be interested, he may not be. He might not be available. Uh, some, obviously, some some researchers are have too many PhD students and they cannot take any anymore, or uh, they are on sabbatical or whatever they cannot take. But if they can and they're interested in what you you what you um, you're proposing, they will help you improve your proposal, improve your project. Um, and then at one point they will say, okay, fine, I think your project is ready for application. And then you apply, there's a process for applying, uh, and there's a series of committees 
that uh, that evaluate research students and 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 the application is then approved or not approved. Uh, it's important. That, why is it important that you know? What, why do we do it this way? Um, it's when you go into into a PhD, you will be doing research and only research. Okay, uh, so the, you know our, our, our PhDs, except for economics, don't have classes. So they're extreme. You know, the research you 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 plan your research, you you plan your field work, you plan experiments, you put science, uh, and then you go and do them. You write it up. You present at, at various levels of how how your research is, is advancing. Uh, so your main contact, in most cases, your only contact. Uh, in the university is going to advise so it's crucial that you understand who that person is because you will be spending the rest three years of your life of your academic career uh with that person so it's crucial that there is a bond there is an interest uh you know you might find the best research in the world but you, you might not like him and you prefer somebody else yeah Definitely. Uh, so Victoria is asking, do you have masters in uh, physiotherapy? We don't in physiotherapy. We have in clinical exercise physiology. So have a look at that, in, in it, which is a one and a half year masters. It's a complicated masters in the sense that there's a prerequisite to go in. Uh, you have to prove Victoria Martins. Uh, I think you're probably from Brazil or Portugal, uh, but uh, you you will have to prove that you've done. Uh, work with in, in the area of, phys of physiotherapy or helping uh, people with uh, exercise physiology before you apply. So it's, it, it, it is possible, yes, we have it. Uh, it's have a look at the entry requirements because they're a bit particular. Perfect. So Emmanuel is asking if you have masters in urban planning. We don't. Uh, no, no. We don't. We have a master of architecture that has some courses in, in, in urban planning, obviously, but but it ha it's a generic master's of architecture. Okay, uh, thank you. And what about chemical um, masters in chemical engineering? No, um, not not, a, not as a coursework. Um, so we have we don't have we have no not in, not in chemist, chemical engineering. Um, we have masters of research. In chemistry, uh, but they're the same as you know the same process that I just described for PhDs. Uh, that's that's how it applies. It, it's a research master's, not a master's of teaching in chemical engineering. Okay, thank you. So as I was also doing the, the research, there was something really um, interesting about Deakin is that they have a lot of uh, flexibility and different study options. So can you list some of these study options that the students can pursue, um, like part-time studies, online, and and more? Um, we have uh, yes. I mean, uh, we we used to have a cloud campus and we had a physical campus. Cloud campus meant uh, classes were recorded. Um, or, or they were live, and you would be in, in, a, in a class, in a platform, uh, in the same class with other live with other live students there. Um, and all students, even the ones that are based on campus, would have access to those recordings, so you could watch it again. So you could go to a class, difficult class, lots of concepts, lots of discussion, uh, and you want to watch it again. You can. Uh, with the pandemic, we moved online. Uh, the, the, the method of teaching changed a bit. Uh, a lot of the classes were pre-recorded, so the lectures are recorded. There's a professor writing on the wall and uh, on the, the board and explaining and so on. Um, so you can watch that whenever you want, at whatever time you want. And then there's seminars uh, and workshops where uh, during the pandemic, they were mostly online, online of course, through Zoom. Now, those are the the, the, the 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 things that are going to happen on, on campus so everything that's practical that requires a laboratory and all the workshops and seminars that will happen on campus the the classrooms the lectures will still be, be pre-recorded um and you can and hopefully we we want to move as, as much back into campus as possible but uh, those are the rules at least for the first uh trimester of this year which starts in in, uh, in a couple of weeks time um, and it'll probably be the same second trimester will, will start in July. Um, so it, it'll be a hybrid model for, for now. You can, 
you, you, if you study online, which you can still do, you can study totally online. It just means that you don't get to go to Australia unless you're already there and you live there. Um, but you know, the Australian government doesn't give you a visa to study online. Uh, so you can study online from abroad. Um, same method, same method, pre record the classes, uh, Zoom seminars. And in that case, you don't have to study full time. What I said before about four units per trimester, so eight, eight units per year, is what we call study on full time. It means that you you know you cannot do more units than that. Uh, each unit will consume around 150 hours per trimester. Uh, it normally has one or two lectures, one or two uh, practicals or uh, laboratory work or seminars. We are not a teaching intensive university, so we don't have eight hours of teaching every day. We have you might have one or two hours per day, and the rest of the, of the work you have to do uh, reading the books, doing the experiments, doing the project work, and so on. So you can do it at your time, which is why in Australia students can work. Um, and then, and, but, and if you do it online. You, you don't have to do it full time, so you can do it part, what we call part time. So you can, can do two units in a trimester, one unit in a trimester, and do it. It will take longer, but, uh, it will be cheaper over time. Oh, sorry, on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a semester basis, but you can take longer. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, so we talked a bit about the masters and the undergraduate, uh, but um, Deakin also has something that uh, offers short courses. So can you tell the students a little bit about the short courses? Um, we, in short courses, we, uh, we have four postgraduate uh, studies. We don't have short undergraduate courses. Um, we have Deakin College, where you can do foundation, or you, or you can do a diploma, which is a, a one-year course. Uh, normally as a pathway into university, uh, but it's still a, a recognized qualification in, in Australia. You can do a diploma in, in several areas, information technology, health, uh, communication, uh, commerce, and so on. Um, and in the, in the um, postgraduate uh, space, we have what we call diplomas and certificates. A certificate is for six months, a diploma is for 12 months, and then a master's is two years. So and, and there, a certificate is four units out of a master, so you do it in six months. Uh, a diploma is uh, one year, so you will do eight units of a master. You will do it in a year. Great. Uh, so I see a lot of questions about scholarships, but before we talk about this topic of scholarships, maybe we can talk a little bit about the campuses, the social environment, um, and uh, just like the student life there in Australia. So. Deakin is ranked number one in Australia for career services. So what are some of the services offered at Deakin that are unique? Right. Um, as I said, talk about the campuses. We have four campuses, as I said before. Uh, the Melbourne one hosts around half of our students. It's uh, on the eastern part of town. The yeah, eastern part of town. It's a very big open campus. Um, the, the campus has security, has a health center, has a library, has sports facilities, has a gym, has a library. Um, and it's a play, a Wi-Fi everywhere, obviously, a, a student accommodation. All our campuses have student accommodation. So normally first years would, would tend to go to, international first years would tend to go and live on campus. Uh, we support students, obviously, academically, so the, the, the courses. But we also support them uh, creating study groups and promoting the creation of study groups. So you started engineering and you need to refresh your maths. Uh, there will be a study group that you can somewhere on campus. And that's uh, the platform. We, we manage it through the, through the platform. We encourage it. We promote it. It's run by other students, uh, more senior students. Uh, but you can find a group of normally five, six people that are improving the maths or improving, improving uh, uh, going over the, the, the you know, basic biology or whatever it is that they need to improve. And there's three groups all over campus all the time. Uh, and they're free, obviously. Uh, we have something like 150 societies and clubs, which can be anything from discussing Harry Potter to um, you know, sports clubs. We are uh, heavily into sports at Deakin. We are number one in the world in sports science. Uh, so we have a lot of teams that 
compete in, uh, in local leagues, in uh, state leagues. Uh, so if you're good at a, 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 a particular sports, you can join those clubs. Um, and finally, uh, the, the, the disemployment part. Uh, we have several units that help students find jobs while they're being a student. So in Australia, as I said, you can work uh, while you're a student. So as we have an agency in, on campus that helps you find jobs. Uh, you have to find them. They're, they're your job. So you know we help you find them. Uh, we have uh, a freelancing hub. So if you're good at doing freelance work, normally people that are, that are studying IT or studying uh, communication and art can get freelance work uh, doing you know, specific projects, uh, creative projects. Uh, and finally, we've got the Deakin Talent. Deakin Talent is the, the arm whereby, whereby we have students finding a job after they finish. And we do that obviously for Australian-based students or the ones that are staying on in, in Australia after their the, the degree. Uh, we also have a lot of connections with multinational and international companies. So we help also international students find jobs outside of Australia. That sounds very supportive and um, really interesting for international students. So Camilla asked about the student life at Deakin, which you already talked a, uh, a bit about. Um, but uh, she's also asking about the lifestyle in Melbourne, or maybe you can even talk about general the general lifestyle in Australia and what can international students um, expect by living there? All right. Um, Australia is a very big place uh, and has very many climates and very different uh, latitudes. So it's talking about Australia is, diff is difficult. Uh, in Melbourne, Melbourne was the most livable city for I think seven years in a row until about two years ago, and now we're number two or number three. For some reason, Vienna has been is considered more more livable than Melbourne, uh, even though you have to learn German. Um, but Melbourne is, is one of the most livable cities in the world. It's a sports capital of, uh, of is the cultural capital of Australia in terms of theater, in terms of uh, uh, cinema life, uh, and so on. It's extremely, it's a very it's a, it's a spread out city. It has a center called the Central Business District, the CBD. Um, and all around it is uh, residential areas that have different uh, different aspects. Uh, Melbourne is the uh, food capital of Australia, uh, is the coffee uh, bar uh, culture of, uh, capital of Australia. Um, it has a, a really nice climate. It has winters and it has summers. It's not like the northern part of Australia that is tropical. Uh, in Melbourne, you will have a winter and you will have a summer, and you will have spring and you will have an autumn. So it's in the four seasons. And each of those four seasons help in, in different ways. We're just, you know, an hour's drive from Yarra Valley, which is one of the wine wine producing areas of, of Melbourne. Uh, you're, you know, literally an hour away from Turkey, which is one of the surf capitals of Southern Australia, uh, of Victoria. Um, the water, you know, the really nice waves there. It's not the, the hot waters of the, of the north, but it's really nice. It's one of the surfing places of the world. Um, you have the Grand Prix, you have the MotoGP Grand Prix, you have the Australian Tennis uh, Open, you have uh, all, all, all sorts of Australian uh, cricket and rugby, and sorry, not rugby, Australian uh, rules football. Um, it's extremely well organized. Uh, transport is, get, you know, public transport gets you everywhere. It's a relatively safe city. Um, what else can I say? Um, and and uh, it's a growing city. It's, it's, a, it's a very dynamic city. That sounds really great. Uh, just going back to the programs, there's a question from Van asking, uh, how many years do you need to study a master's degree? A master's degree, most of our masters are two years. Uh, there's some cases where the masters might be a slightly shorter, like the master of uh, exercise physiology, which is one and a half years. There's a master of education, which is being renewed and will come back next year. It used to be one and a half years and will come back as two years. Um, so most of most students, most international students will do two years. Uh, okay. If you look at our webpage, sorry, if you look at our webpage, uh, you will see maybe 
uh, we have a Masters of Engineering and a Masters of Engineering Professional. Uh, the Masters of Engineering is a one and a half year, and it does not include a work placement. It doesn't include the work part. Uh, so most international students would do the two year the professional uh, uh, masters, uh, which gives you the work experience in Australia because people want to then stay and work. And, and having that work experience is often crucial to getting a good job. Australians who might, might be working, might be engineers, uh, might be uh, wanting to do a master's, they'll probably do the one and a half year master's of engineering. Great. Um, so finally, uh, now we're going to talk about scholarships, which a lot of students are also interested in and, and asking about. So what are the scholarship opportunities uh, for international students? Um, let, let me start with the, with, the, with the easy part, which is the academic merit uh, scholarship. We have uh, what we call academic merit scholarships, which can be 25%. We call it the Deakin International Student Scholarship. Uh, we have a vice chancellor scholarship, uh, which can be a 50% discount or it can be a 100% discount. Uh, it depends on your academic scores. We will look at only that. Okay, so we will look at how good your first degree was, how good your uh, international baccalaureate or English A levels or American high school or uh, Deakin College if you have to do Deakin College. Okay, so it's based on. <laughs> competitive okay so you you apply uh, you have to apply that's not been, uh, something i didn't mention uh, you have to apply it's the application is easy it's uh, you have to apply before you 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 while you're applying for university it's a separate process you have to apply for university and you have to apply for the for the scholarship which is a, filling out a form getting to references and writing a motivation letter there for the scholarships yes you have to write a motivation letter you have to tell us why you are the most intelligent, the most, the greatest student that we could ever have uh, at the university. You, have, you know, you have to convince us. Uh, while you will be a very good ambassador for for Deakin once you go back into the into your country, uh, uh, to your country and into the, the, the professional world. Um, so those are the Deakin International and Vice Chancellor Scholarship. We also have region-based scholarships. So we have a Latin American student scholarship, which is for all Latin American students. It's automatic. We will look at a, a your a your a your degree, a your a your grades, but but it's uh, but it's basically for um, for, uh, for for Latin America. We have a Vietnam scholarship. Uh, we have a South Asia scholarship. We have a Deakin Indian undergraduate. So we have. D different Sri Lanka, Singapore, uh, different uh, countries have different uh, scholarships, uh, sometimes tailored and sometimes are for general you know, open to all students. Uh, as I said, we are, we, our scholarship, except for the postgrad, for the uh, research uh, postgraduates, our scholarships are discounts on your uh, fees. Okay. Uh, great. So Chica and Samuel, they both both are asking about uh, the same thing. They're asking if there's a scholarship for bachelors um, in nursing. Uh, yes, I mean all, of, yeah. all the scholarships that I mentioned are open to all students, all international students, uh, whatever course you do. The only scholarship, the only course that does not have a scholarship, uh, sorry, there's two courses that don't have a scholarship. One is foundation. That one you doesn't have a scholarship, and the other one is the the in the career of medicine. The second the, the last four years, which is a postgraduate, we call doctor of medicine. That one doesn't have a scholarship. So, but all the other bachelors and all the masters, all the scholarships apply. Okay, uh, yeah, perfect. So I'm assuming it's the same for. Um, Eddie Tony as well, because he's asking about the electrical computer engineering scholarship for that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. have a look at whether we have a scholarship for your region, like Latin America or Vietnam or Sri Lanka and so on. Uh, if not, you can apply for the International uh, Student Scholarship. That's open to all international students. Okay, uh, perfect. So 
Tito is asking, I have a diploma in logistics and supply chain management from Kenyan University. I am, am I eligible for a degree program for the same? Um, I had a C minus in my high school. Um, you, I, as I said, I look after Latin America, so Tito, I'm, I'm not sure, really sure about the Kenyan uh, requirements. So why don't you drop me a line and I'll put you in contact with my colleague that looks after Kenya and, and he or she can 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 advise because uh whatever i say I, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be wrong yeah and uh we're gonna provide the uh, email and the contact information on screen for sure so that the students can ask uh, more questions if they didn't get the chance to do so uh, during this live but there's a question from tanya um how much time does the university give for gaining work experience in masters in clinical psychology mm. Uh, that's a detailed question that I need to, to look into. Uh, uh, clinical psychology is two years. Um, let me see if I can get that quickly. If not, I just that you go and look at, at our web page. Uh, but uh, it's, let me see, psychology, graduate, master's of, I don't know. Psychology. Uh, clinical psychology. So you have sixty units. So you have sixty units. Uh, you would have. So you would have the first semester is uh, there's a. First trimester, you would have one called psychological intervention and one psychological assessment. Uh, second trimester, one intervention. Then you have a research thesis, clinical placement, case analysis two. Sorry, there's a clinical placement in uh, first year, clinical uh, placement in second year. And it's two clinical placements. So you basically, you would have three units of clinical placement uh, during the the course. I suggest you go and look at the page, actually what it means, uh, uh, what assess an assessment is and placement means. Uh, it's, it's not my subject, so maybe, you know, I, 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 it's, it's rather detailed. Uh, I suggest you go and look at the, at, the, at, the, at the link or you get in touch and we can look at it together. Okay, great. Um, so a lot of the students were also asking about the tuition costs. So this might vary because uh, like different programs and different uh, levels of, uh, of um, studying, but can you give the students um, just a, a general tuition fee average? Um, well, it depends on the, on the, on the court. As I said, the bachelors, we're, you know, the, the standard prices are about from around 28,000 Australian dollars uh, per year to about 36, 37,000 Australian dollars per year for eight units of study in every year. Um, the masters are slightly more expensive. They're about 20, from 22, 23, sorry, 32, 33 to about slightly over 40,000 Australian dollars per year. The MBAs are, are more expensive. They're about 43, 44,000 uh, dollars. That's before any scholarship. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Alejandro is asking, uh, are there any limitations regarding these scholarships for students that are considering transferring? Uh, no. You can, if you want to transfer, uh, basically you apply to Deakin and you ask for your credits to be, uh, for the credits of the studies that you've done already to be recognized. Okay, so we, you will have to provide transcripts of the course that you've done, and the faculty will tell you, we recognize this course, this course, this course, you don't have to do to recognize because you've done it before. Um, and uh, and uh, uh, depending on, you know, you, you can evaluate whether it's, it's a good option or not. Um, remember our bachelors are three years, except for engineering, which are four years. So you've done three years somewhere else, you know, you're gonna get, you're not gonna get three years of recognition because I, I was be giving you a full Dickens degree if you haven't studied somewhere else. So you have to 
you know, look at, the, at those options. It's uh, transfer is possible, and, and obviously you're entitled to the same scholarship as any incoming student. Great. So uh, we have a few uh, minutes left. So guys, keep your questions coming. Uh, we're going to answer as much as we can before um, ending the live. Uh, there's a question from Anthony. If I apply for admission as an undergraduate, will I be giving scholarship? If you're good enough, yes. If you're a good student, yes, you can apply for a scholarship. We don't have to issue uh, application fee, neither for university nor for dwelling. Uh, so app app applying is, is totally free. We will evaluate you. Uh, you would have. You will have to provide your transcripts, uh, original language and translation if it's not in English, uh, a certificate of English, um, and your passport. Okay. Uh, so, so there's a question from Abdul Aziz. How much can I spend to study in computer software engineering, and how many years to be completed? Um, software engineering, it's a three year course. Hang on, it's engineering. So, uh, let me just check. It's the, the, the IT three years, but the engineering courses are, are four years, and, uh, and software engineering, I'm not, now I'm not sure. So, let me just check for you. Um, so, you would have information technology. Uh, papa. Back to the you want to do software engineering. Uh, Bachelor of Software Engineering, there we are. Uh, so there's the last one. Second. No, just give me a second. So of software engineering. Uh, I'm not as long as it's a four year course, um, and it costs 34,400 Australian dollars per year. And it's a four year course because it's engineering. Okay, thank you. So, you guys, unfortunately, we're going to um, have to end this, but um, if you if you didn't have a chance to ask your questions or if we didn't pick it because there was so many, um, um, you can still get in touch with Gonzalo. Here's the email and the phone number provided on screen. You can definitely get in touch, ask your questions and just get more information. Um, yeah, so Gonzalo, would you like to just uh, give the students one last advice and um, just, uh, just give them like an encouragement about whether or not they should study abroad in Australia? Australia is a fantastic place to go study. Uh, I, I don't, you know, I wouldn't doubt that if you're interested in, obviously you have to have the level of English required um, and you need to choose the university that's best for you and the career that's best for you. Our, our most our degrees of three years or four years in case of engineering, masters of two years. Uh, you can work in Australia, you can stay and work after afterwards. So it's a fantastic experience, even if, for a few years. Uh, you can live on campus. Uh, Australia is a easy going, uh, but yet uh, one of the most advanced uh, and, and uh, innovative societies we have. Uh, I would recommend it. But do your research, have a look at universities, have a look at the offers, talk to us. Uh, you know, we are there to tell you about us. So talk to us. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Gonzalo, for being here. And thank you for giving the students so many uh, amazing uh, information and knowledge and really helping them uh, reach their goals of studying abroad. So thank you for being here. And we hope to see you soon again on the Student World Talks. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody, for the questions. And I apologize for the ones that we couldn't answer, but uh, happy to answer them offline. Take care.
Perfect. Thank you. Um, so, guys, once again, thank you so much for joining today's episode. Um, I really hope that you guys got um, all the information that you needed and that you enjoyed this episode. Um, and just before ending this, I want you to and I want to remind you guys that we do have an Instagram page where we always um, update you guys about universities, about all the information that you need to know about studying abroad. So you can see the um, you can see on screen here the student world. So please follow us there. Um, like our post, talk to us, comment, send us direct messages, and we will be more than happy to talk to you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And I really hope to see you again next Tuesday on this live. Thank you, guys. Bye.